Well, good morning and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I'm very excited to be with you again this morning as we uh, take a look at uh, the next chapter of J. Pay Leitner's book, The Prayer of Agar. We are in chapter uh, seven this week. Uh, I'm sorry, we're in chapter six this week, uh, and we are uh, taking a look at the idea of access, um, or uh, as J. Pay Leitner has said, uh, not too much, not too little. Uh, this is looking specifically at Proverbs uh, 30 and verse 8 that says, Give me neither poverty, poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. And so here, Agar is asking God very, very specifically um, to provide for him in a certain way. And that provision uh, he asks is that God wouldn't give him anything more or anything less than exactly what he needs. And so, of course, he uses that term daily bread. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. And we hear Jesus pray the same way in the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 5, uh, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Now, he doesn't say only. Here, Agar uses the word only, only my daily bread. But um, Jesus doesn't use that term only. Uh, does that mean that Jesus was teaching us to pray that we would have our daily bread, but we could also have more? Uh, or how does this all work? I, I, I don't think that's what Jesus necessarily was saying because he used the term daily bread. And that's really where I want to focus. Daily bread, what does it mean? Well, daily bread literally means what we need to keep us for that day. And so I think when Jesus prays that way, and he says, give me what I need for this day, give us what we need for this particular day, there's a sense in which we're recognizing we don't need more than what will just keep us this particular day. So Jesus says, pray that way. Ask God to keep you that particular day. Now, he may, from time to time, give you more than you need, which is awesome. Why would he give you more than you need? Well, because he may want you to share uh, with those who are in need. Um, he may be using you as a conduit to bring uh, much needed resources to someone else. Uh, Agar, though, you know, he's very specific. He prays in such a way where he says, only my daily bread. I only want what I truly need from you. Um, for me, uh, Agar says, having more than what it is that I truly need will, will bring on me, perhaps, um, the sin or the sinfulness of uh, constantly wanting more. And that's where uh, J. Payleitner kind of turns in the chapter today. Uh, on page um, 37, um, it says here, um, Without listing the multiple ways society is broken, suffice it to say, it's not uncommon for bigger, faster, busier, and pricier to lead to heartbreak and despair. When we consider the ramifications of overspending, overconsuming, overindulging, there is ample justification for a minimalist mindset. Still, Agar is not endorsing minimalism, nor is he suggesting that wealth and influence define success. He endorses neither fast nor slow, big nor small, fancy nor simple. Our endearing friend Agar has identified a sweet spot, the perfect balance of getting what you need and needing what you get. He sums it up nicely as my daily bread. And I was thinking about Moses as he's leading the people of Israel and uh, walking through the desert uh, on their way to the promised land. And in um, chapter 16 of, of, of Exodus, uh, we hear about God providing manna and quail. And he provides this in a very miraculous way at a moment when the people are feeling like they should have just stayed in, in Egypt. At least they had, you know, three square meals and a roof over their head. Um, God says, here, let me provide for you uh, quail, meat from a bird, uh, in the middle of the desert where quail don't live. So that's miraculous. And then secondly, he says, here's manna. And they'd never known what manna was before, but manna is a bread that was provided for them. And it came like, 
like like dew or, or like snow on the ground, and, and they were to go out and gather as much as they needed for their household. But interestingly enough, it says in verse 19, then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. Um uh, the idea being here that Israel was supposed to go out and gather up what their household would need, could eat in that particular moment, but nothing more. They didn't need to store this because God was going to provide for them again. He said he would give this to them every day. He would give them their daily bread. Verse 20 of Exodus 16, though, says, however, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept a part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So, so God says, listen, I need you to trust me. I'm going to give you what you need when you need it. And I need you to believe that when I give you what you need, I'm, I'm giving you what you need. You don't need more. The people of Israel had a hard time believing that. They had a hard time being content with just this little bit of bread that showed up uh, in, the, in the middle of the night on the ground kind of thing. I think we find ourselves to be in a very similar place. We struggle with contentment. We struggle with living within the means of daily bread. And so I think where we sort of wrap this all together today is this. There's a sense in which we as uh, human beings will never, ever, ever be satisfied because that's, that's the simple part of our, of our nature. We're always going to have a desire for something else, something more, something better. Even some of the, the most content, satisfied, um, humble people I know in my life at some point have uh, a, a desire uh, for something else, something more, at least something different. And um, what God is really sort of putting on Agar's heart, what God was pushing for Moses to encourage the people with, what Jesus is really kind of leading us to is this. Trust the Lord that he will provide for you. And what he gives you is sufficient. It's what you need in that moment. Is it everything you could possibly have? No. But it is what you need for that moment. I'll sort of uh, wrap up today with uh, an illustration that, that I thought of. Um, my son in particular, but my family, uh, likes to sometimes go to uh, the local uh, China buffet, uh, uh, Chinese buffet. And uh, it's great because my family really loves Chinese food. And so when you go to a buffet, right, it's all you can have. Like you can, you don't have to choose between your favorite dishes. You can have them all. And it's really one of, uh, especially my son, Ethan, he just really loves to be able to pick and choose the things he really loves from, from Chinese food. Well, the struggle for me when I go there, though, is I see a lot of folks who will go there and fill plate after plate after plate and eat bits and pieces of it and then, and then just send the rest to be thrown away. And it's so incredibly wasteful. Uh, I, I, I've, I've always kind of struggled with that about buffet restaurants and even restaurants in general who, who just give you lots of food. You know, people aren't going to eat all of that. And then what happens to it? It gets thrown away. Uh, it's so discouraging, especially because we have people in our world who are what we call food insufficient or food insecure. Um, they don't know where their next, next meal is coming from. They, they can't just go to the pantry and, uh, and, and find a snack or whatever the case is. And so it, it's so hard for me to sort of watch this food go to waste. Um, I think that's the reason why God pushes us towards daily bread. So that we're not being wasteful, so that we can be faithful stewards. Like God has given us so much. He gives to us every single day. But can you imagine the waste that must happen to you? God gives and people never use. People just toss it out. Uh, so let's not be that way. Let's pray and ask God for our daily bread. Let's ask him to give us exactly what we need, exactly what we can use in that moment for that day. And let him provide anything else he thinks we need, anything more. Let him add the plus, if you will. It's a very hard thing to do, to live in that contentment. But I think that's where the sweet spot is, when we can recognize that we have what we need. And God's got us. And he's going to provide for us. 
Well, I hope you all have a great week. And until we see each other again next week, um, I just pray that you will be blessed um, by your time in the word this week and um, look forward to seeing you again next week.